Last night, Fujifilm finally released their newest addition to their compact line, the Fujifilm X106. That's going to be the successor to this one, the Fujifilm X100V. So before we get started, I want to know, if you are going to pre-order this, or even if you have some of the older generations, which color would you choose? Would you choose the silver or the black? Let me know in the comments below. Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing alright. My name is Matt, this is Dwyer Creatives, and it's time for 2 Minute Tuesday. So let's put 2 minutes on that clock. Now, I kind of wanted to talk about the latest release from Fuji um, at X Summit last night, or very early this morning. It was at 12.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and they finally announced the Fujifilm X106. Now, as I said, this is going to be the successor to the Fujifilm X100B, so the latest model is going to be a part of their compact line. It's going to have a 40 megapixel sensor with IBIS, which is in-body image stabilization. So why would IBIS be a huge thing? If you're shooting in low light and you're trying to hold your camera steady, this will help do that. Or if you're filming and trying to do a little pan or movement with it, this will help steady the footage with that. Now saying that, this is also going to be now a true hybrid camera. It's going to be able to shoot 4K 60 and 6.2K at 30 frames per second with a crop though. And all of this is going to be at 10 bit with 422 internal recording. This is something that I would like to see how that develops because it is a small body with other cameras that I've used in the past. This has become an issue with overheating. I'm also wondering if the recording is going to be limited by the SD card it's going to have a UHS-1 SD slot. Something I'm really excited about is that it has now an internal neutral density filter in it. So when you're going from inside to outside, you don't have to carry that extra filter. You can just drop it on and you're good to go. This camera is also going to have their X processor 5, which is supposed to be twice as fast as the Mark 5. And also it's supposed to be much more efficient, which goes into the battery life. It's going to have the same size battery and supposed to have the same life. That's something that I think will be interesting to see as as if you're using this as a hybrid camera shooting video with that that's going to definitely chew up more of the battery so we're going to have to see how much that really affects it and if you need to bring multiple batteries with you which i always do anyway but how many do you need so this also is going to bring improved autofocus especially when tracking subjects so you're going to be able to track trains vehicles people and animals now this camera is going to have the same lens as the mark 5 which is the 23 millimeter at f2 saying that it will have a digital zoom with it at 50 and at 70 so at 50 you're going to go down to 20 megapixels and at 70 you're going to go down to 10. now i don't find that as a big issue and i'll say that to at least the 50 because my main camera which is my r6 is about 20 megapixels and then another camera that's way older that i've been using is my canon 5d mark ii which is again around 20 megapixels and those always produce great images being that it's the same lens you're going to be able to use the same adapter and the filters with it and this is going to help weather seal it saying that it's weather sealed though i feel like this is going to be the mark 5 so this is going to help it be weather resistant but it's definitely not going to be weatherproof and I would be apprehensive to use it in something like a downpour or anything over than a drizzle. Well, some of the last features are going to be their camera to cloud uploads or their C2C. Now you're going to have to use Adobe's creative subscription plan to be able to access that. Personally, I'm not using Adobe right now, so that's not something that I would find useful. They also are going to be doing a limited edition. You're going to see a few extra, extra engravings and I'll leave a few pictures for all this stuff right up there. And the limited edition is definitely going to come at a premium price. So do I think this is something worth upgrading to or if you're looking to get into the Fuji and compact area, this would be a good starter camera. I think that if you do have the opportunity, you definitely should jump on it because again, the older fives are still kind of a hot item. Prices are going to be all over. While this one, supposedly they're supposed to try to get these out in higher numbers. Even if you have a little bit of a back order, I'm hoping that they get through those pretty quickly as they did choose to manufacture these in China opposed to Japan to help meet those demands. As for myself, I do think I'm going to pick this up even though I do have the Fujifilm X100V. Let me know if this is something that you're going to pre-order, you have pre-ordered, or if you're going to look for the Mark V. And as always, I ran past the two minute mark. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.